things really could have gone a whole lot better with Ipsy. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning into another one of my videos. So you'll notice that I have this outfit on for a few videos because today's my filming day and I'm trying to get a few of these done today on Friday. So I signed up for Ipsy and at first I really just wanted to focus on the skincare. I love the options for, for April and I thought, okay, let me do this. You're supposed to get five curated items with the ability to select one of the items in your bag so you at least know what you're getting. That's what I signed up for. I took screenshots of the sign up process because I thought I was going to do this little like video for you guys. And things really could have gone a whole lot better with Ipsy. So before I unbox this, I just wanted to give you a little heads up on what happened with Ipsy just so that you're aware if this happens to you. So as a new subscriber, uh, Ipsy does promise you the ability to get five uh, curated items based on your profile with one item that you select. However, what they have been failing to tell people, and they have told them this in the past, they just didn't do it when I signed up on April 1st, was that your first bag is gonna be a welcome bag, which is a unpersonalized pre-curated bag that Ipsy created for new subscribers. You know what, while they can certainly do that if they disclose this to you, but if Ipsy did not disclose this to you and you suddenly receive this bag and you're very unhappy with it, they have to refund you your money. And that's because there are very clear rules that the FTC has put out on how you can market and advertise products. And what happened to me is that, you know, I logged on to Ipsy, I got my subscription, and I'm waiting to customize my one product on April 1st, and then all of a sudden I, you know, I see this little like truck and it's like your product is being assembled. I'm like, okay, my bag's being assembled, and then I scroll down and it says, here's your April glam bag, and it's already this pre-curated bag of items that I definitely did not personalize. So naturally, I didn't know if this was some sort of a free bag. They're calling it a welcome bag, which I think is already deceptive enough. Normally, welcome bags are kind of complimentary of bags, free bags that you're getting. But no, this was the bag that I'm paying for, and it was not disclosed to me that I was going to be getting a pre-curated bag. So I try to reach out to Ipsy. They tell you to reach out to them on social media. No one responds. I finally got through the chat you know, with enough clicks of no, no, no. They have this chat box, it's automated. You just have to keep clicking. You're not helping, you're not helping, you're not helping. And finally, they'll let you submit an email. I didn't get a response back to an email that I sent at like 4 p.m. until 2 a.m. And the woman that wrote me back said, well, this is your, your welcome bag, give it a try, you know. Didn't mention anything like, oh, sorry, we should have advertised that we're sending you a pre-curated bag your first month. Nothing. And then 20 minutes after she sent that email, she created a shipping label, which I thought was incredibly disingenuous. That means that once they create a shipping label, they are, they've already processed the intention to send you this item. That means refunding you becomes a little bit more challenging or to request a refund because if they haven't shipped you a product, you do have a right to requ request a refund. You can unsubscribe and say, hey, look, I don't, I don't want this anymore. But she created the shipping label, which was very disingenuous, and it wouldn't allow me the option to then uh, customize the bag and ask Ipsy for the items that they advertised or ask for the experience that they advertised. When I discovered this at, you know, like 6 a.m., because I actually woke up thinking that I would be able to add add-ons, which unfortunately, if you're new for that month, you can't participate in the add-on program apparently, which surprised me because she created that shipping label right away. I was very disappointed in that, but then more so that I'm getting this box that, or this bag that was never disclosed, this unpersonalized bag. And I said to her, look, you know, this was very disingenuous of you and you have FTC rules that you have to abide by. Now, for some strange reason, I find that the beauty industry is, you know, this is more prevalent where people will actually, you know, like not even adhere to FTC rules and regulations on marketing. You cannot bait and switch customers. You cannot tell somebody that they're going to get a curated bag based on their profile with one item that they can select and then send them an un customized, unpersonalized bag because it's easier for you logistically. That's a bait and switch. 
and companies do get fined by that and there is an organization that monitors this marketing language. And what's disappointing is that I do know that there are large beauty companies that do this and because I've made a video about this previously, Sephora is probably the biggest offender of violating those FTC rules. So I almost kind of wonder if other beauty services, sub subscription services, or just other beauty companies see Sephora gets away with it and they go, oh, okay, well maybe we can get away with it too. Now, I also know that a lot of people will say, well, you know, you signed up for a subscription service, so wah wah, you got a bag that you didn't like. Uh, agreed. But I got in a bag that wasn't even disclosed to me. I mean, you have to disclose to people that the first bag they're going to get is an uncustomized, unpersonalized bag. You can't just give them something that is logistically easier for you and is against the marketing that you told them of what you're going to give them. So the FTC not only monitors that the ingredients like organic and natural fit the description of organic and natural for companies to put to put those that labeling on their products, they also monitor business practices like bait and switch. So I was very disappointed in Ipsy. And the other thing that happened with Ipsy is that suddenly after I had complained and then I listed off the FTC issue, Ipsy upgraded my membership to an annual membership that they're going to charge me for in May. I, I was like flabbergasted. All of a sudden, you know, thank God I read those like five or six emails that you get from Ipsy when you first sign up. Because when you first sign up, you get like 600 pop-ups on Ipsy, like, you know, subscribe your friends, subscribe your friends, send, send them a link, send them a link. And then all of a sudden you get like six emails. Thank God I read that email that was like really weirdly cryptic because I, I don't know Ipsy. I don't know their course of business at this point. I'm new. And it said something about my annual membership and I look and I got, they forced an upgrade to an annual for me. I canceled that. I actually ended up um, pushing Ipsy really hard on this and they refunded me for the, for the fact that they didn't advertise this bag. So they shipped it out to me anyway, which was, you know, nice of them. I told them not to do it. They said, look, we already created the shipping label, so you're getting this. So I'm going to unbox this, but just in case, you got a welcome bag that you were not aware of and they didn't advertise this to you, you have every right to claim a refund. It doesn't matter if it happened for one month or three months or 12 months. And this is not the part, you know, part for the course business practice that a company should be pursuing. And I have heard other YouTubers mention this and that's wrong. We have rules in place for marketing and advertising and companies cannot violate those rules. Now, if you would be happy with this welcome bag, that's a whole nother thing, you know, keep the bag, you know, don't get the bad karma and try to get a refund for something that you actually love. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and see what we got. So these were the contents of the welcome bag. Now it is very cute, the welcome bag itself, small, nice. I, I do like the packaging here. We got this uh, Farrah Eye Contour Brush uh, 635E. I don't really know what that means because I don't I don't do a whole lot of makeup like I said before. But you know what? Um, I have like a handful of eye brushes that I use to apply my makeup when I do my videos. So okay, this will go in the collection. Um, you know, it didn't really fit my profile, but all right. Now we also got this card in here, so they do show you what you're gonna get. Okay. Now, that's at least good. I mean, I, I do like to see that. Uh, the first product that I'm pulling out is Teeny Tiny. This is the Glam Glow Bright Eyes. Now, as someone that loves skincare, Glam Glow is just not my favorite product line, if I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that they put in a lot of fillers into their products, you know, like glitter and other things that I think just cause more skin irritation. Overall, I did look at the ingredients list for this. It was very, very long, which always makes me a little bit nervous, but I didn't see anything too offensive and I didn't really see any fragrance. I'll have to double check that, but okay, fine. I mean, not super excited. It was definitely not a brand that I had selected. Um, then we got this Neogene Dermatology a Prebiotics Youth Repair Cream. I don't see anything wrong with this cream. It, it's not very full if you can already see it like it's probably about halfway full. That's that right where my finger ends is is how much product is in there. So this is, you know, maybe a few uses. 
Now, the only issue that I had with this cream is because on the website description of the Glam Bag, they say that this is their most highly rated products. For this particular month, because they had some great skincare options, this was actually the lowest rated product. So I was like, okay, Ipsy. I mean, I don't know. It seems like they paired this together with the bag for color more than they did for maybe the ratings. I mean, look, this does nicely pair together. The presentation's great. And then moving on, I think this is the eyeshadow. Okay, but you can see here's the compact. These are the sh these are the shadows. You have one shimmer shade and one uh, matte shade. I mean, they look okay. Uh, I will. I'm not the best at swatching. But oh wow, that has a lot of color payoff. You can see um, the color payoff right there for those two shades. Okay, I mean, they're definitely pretty. I won't I won't lie about that. They're certainly pretty shades. The shimmer shade is quite nice. But it just, you know, again, it was an item that I had rarely selected, so I was not super excited for it in this particular bag. And then lastly, they sent me the 24-hour brow setter. Uh, I microblade my eyebrows, so I don't really like set them anymore. I mean, this is not a bad product. Again, I don't think that these are necessarily bad products for a lot of people. I think that this on average will make people happy, but you do kind of have to disclose that you're giving folks these, especially for someone like me, that these items just so happen to be items that I would not have selected, especially for this month, seeing their, their options. Not my most positive video, but I wanted to make sure that you're aware that if these marketing practices happen to you, you have every right to ask for a refund. Uh, you have every right to tell the company not to ship you the product. Ipsy still did, so I did get this for, for free, essentially. I do have a, a mystery bag that I got from them for April, actually, because I really like the April product. So. Fingers crossed that I get some of those skincare items in that mystery bag. And I was finally able to access these second chance add-ons. So hopefully, again, fingers crossed that Ipsy sends me those. I know sometimes they do cancel orders. Um, but yeah, a little bit disappointing. I was really looking forward to this Ipsy experience. Right now, I canceled this. I might resubscribe, especially since I'm seeing these Glam Bag X's and I'm like, wow, those products are so good. But anyway, I made the company aware of how I feel and hopefully things do improve. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another one of my videos. I really appreciate it. I always appreciate your comments, your feedback, your likes, your dislikes, you know, your subscribes, obviously, anything you wanna share with me. I always really appreciate it because I do these videos to get better at speaking in public. I'm, like terrified when I start these videos and uh, this really does help me to open up. So I know if I'm janky or if I'm overdoing it, I'm sorry, you know, please feel free to share that feedback. Guys, thank you again for your time and I hope you're having a great and amazing day. Bye.